Hello everyone, I am Sonia Kohler and in this video, I want to talk to you guys about how to work with dates in a Python data frame, particularly using the date time package. So if you have a data frame and you're trying to figure out certain dates um, that um, you know you subset, filter, uh, you know, work with dates, how do you work with that, right? And it's a coincidentally a very opportune time given that, you know, we're just entering in a new year. So um, at the time I'm making this video, it is going to be uh, the new year. So with that, just want to wish you guys a happy new year. And with that, there are all sorts of questions, you know, of what the new year will bring. But years are important, dates are important, and it's one day going into the next day. So that's what we're really celebrating here. So with that being said, I just want to talk about this um, new date time package and how you can kind of work with that to better understand your data and how that looks. So this data that I'm looking at, it's coming from Kaggle.com and it's on unemployment data. So I know that's not a very exciting data set to look at and not exciting, but it's kind of depressing, right? But hopefully employment trends are looking a little bit better. Uh, life is changing um, for the better, hopefully. So yeah, I've kind of talked in other videos how you get data um, and how that's important. But here, what's important is, is seeing um, this data set and uh, the way that the dates are given. Um, so I'm in the US, so we give our dates in terms of month, days, and years. I know it's kind of odd, but you know, to each country their own. And in London, what they do is they typically have the day, the month, and then the year. <laughs> so anyways, so if we look at this data um, set here that we have from Kaggle.com and US unemployment data from 1948 to 2021, then uh, this data is freely available on Kaggle.com. So it has age ranges from 16 to 55 and over and unemployment rates for men and women and this data is from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. So what you see here is that we have information on the date, the total unemployment rate, the unemployment rate for men, the unemployment rate for women, unemployment rates for different categories, 16 to 17 years old, 18 to 19, 20 to 24, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, and 45 to 54. So we have unemployment information for all of these demographics. And in other videos, I've talked about how you can sort of sort through that data and make sense of it um, and subset it. And I'm going to kind of show you how I could do that, um, how I can do some initial uh, data exploration of this data set, um, which is really nice um, using some of the pandas tools. And no, they are not the cute little pandas that um, we like to see. And, you know, the, but this is pandas, it's still a data frame technology. So what you'll do here is, you know, you can import pandas as PD and NumPy as NP, and these are sort of nicknames. And then here you can read in the data frame, it's unemployment rate data.csv, and then you'll see your Python data frame here. And then the next thing that you'll see is that um, once you pull this over, you'll see that we have this data frame and it has 887 rows and 11 columns. And this indeed is the same data that we pulled in. So once you download from Kaggle the data set, you will get um, a CSV called unemployment rate data.csv. This is the data. And these are commands to import the data sets. And these are like the nicknames for them. So the PD is pandas. So we can do a lot of different things, for instance. Like, let me see. I want to maybe, I can do like DFL shape. And then this tells me uh, 887 rows by 11 um, columns. This is a tuple. And let's say I want to look at when unrate, um, unemployment rate overall. Let's say that I want to look at it and see maybe um, unrate. I can see maybe when is unemployment rate greater than, um, so we can see the from 4, 4.5. Let's just say I want to look at it when it's greater than 4. So we can just select the column unrate. And then just select the value that we want it to be greater than. And then we can see that out of the 887 rows, there are 748 rows now. So we've lost information on about like uh, almost about a 140 rows, 140 dates of information. You know, beginning um, with this, the unemployment rate was a little bit lower in Jan 1st, 1948. 
and then it went up higher, but we're looking at this unrate. So we're slashing out basically all values that are for or below. So we slash out for unrate. This one gets slashed out. Then um, we're slashing out this one and this one as well. So we're pretty much like slashing out like a lot of the dates um, where the unemployment rate is kind of um, lower. So um, that's one way to slice it. So we might naturally have some questions, right? Like, okay, well, I want to kind of um, look at some of this data for a specific time point. You know, so one of the things we can do, and in fact, um, I talk about this in another video as well, but we can look at Plotly Express as well, and we can even see some things like the unemployment rate. So what I can do is I can just say very quickly that DF, um, unemployment rate percent equals DF, unrate. Just like it's, oh, you can just rename the columns. So I can just see this and I can quickly just plot the figure um, using a Plotly Express um, for an interactive visual. And each time I run this, the cell number updates to eight or so, and this is seven. So um, now let me show you how the plot will look. So what I can then do is I can just do to make a line chart basically of how unemployment looks. I can just do something for unrate fix. And unfortunately, this data is a wide data frame. Um, so I will have other videos talking about how to plot this in any case. But I still want to show you that we have the state variable here. And we can maybe plot by um, the y equals this new column that I've added in that was not here called unemployment rate. You know, before it's unrate 55 and over, but I've added in this new column. So we can just view this. But then a natural question that I'll talk about will be, well, hey, how can we filter? This should be fig. For a figure. Fig dot show. So we have this nice, cute little line plot that shows unemployment rate across these various dates here. But a question you might have um, naturally is, let's say I just want to view unemployment rate from like this time period, like after 1994, like how would I do that? So your question would be like, okay, so we have all these dates, right? But I want to view unemployment rate from a sit up till a sit in uh, after a sit in date, or I want to be able to filter it, similar to how I was able to restrict, um, you know, unemployment rate by a certain number, unemployment rate above four. Um, and if I wanted it to include four, it would be great, you know, greater than or equal to four, that would also include four in the calculation. But now I want to do the same thing for date. So will it be possible? Let's try that out and see if we can filter on dates. And let's just choose um, some random date here. Let's choose. Um, let's just say, okay, so our format for the date is month, day, year. Okay, so this is month, uh, July 1st, 2021. So I want to maybe do something like, um, and, and, you know, to get a better intuition of what the date looks like, I can just do DF, date. And I can, if I do this, I'll see a little bit more about it. It looks like this. I can turn it into a list because I want to make more sense of it. And it looks like a string, right? So it's, it's you know, just like this. So what I may want to do is just do something like this, where I instead say, okay, some random date is 4, 17, 1995. Just, you know, some random date. And what I could then do is you might say, okay, well, similar to how we filtered, this is only selecting the rows where our unemployment rate was greater than 4%. And then if I did this, for instance, um, you can see like there are 748 rows. And if I did greater than or equal to, it would have looked like this or equal to 4%. So we expect to get a little bit more 
and did we do 748, 761 because there's some that are equal to four, four, four. So what I wanna do here now is I wanna just do the same thing for date. So uh, I wanna be able to select from a random date. So um, again, let's just do df.head and just see the first part of it. If we wanna be the last few rows of this, we can do df.tail. And this will get us the last few rows of this data set. Remember, the data set ends on 886 because we have 887 total rows and the index starts at zero. So tail gets us the last few rows of the data set. So it gives us, tail gives us the last five rows of the data set. And then if we did df.head, we get the first five. Okay. So what we see here is we want to do the same approach that we did here, where we looked at the uh, unrate. We want to do the same thing for the date. I want to find unemployment rate, basically, that is greater than or equal to random date. And I, I hope this works, right? Like it should work, right? We think it should work, right? Like I'm, I have a random date and I just want to find um, when my date is greater than that because it, it should work, right? Because we could do the same thing for, um, for the un employment rate. I could do the same thing for another numeric column, for instance, the unemployment rate for women was greater than maybe um, 7%. And I could do the same thing for women too. And, and do the same calculation. I find 227 it arose where the unemployment rate was greater than or equal to 7 for women in the U.S. Um, here. So why can't I do that for date? And the idea is that unfortunately, we need to work with the date and we need to change the date object to something that we can work with. That's sadly what we need to do. And the key idea is that we need to do some date time operation. So an idea is that we need to import this new package that's called date time, import date time. This will allow us to work with dates. This is a date time package. So let's say we have some current date out here. We have some current date. So we're trying to work with date time package, please. Okay. So let's say, and this is a markdown so I can run this. So let's say I'm trying to work with the date time package here. So I have some current date, for instance, equals, um, let's say I wanna do, uh, June 5th, 1990, for instance. That's a current date. The format of date will be given by, it, it, the format is that we write in the US, it's typically date, um, that's how it's month, now I'm gonna get confused, month, day, and year. It's, it's, um, it's pretty much as though I'm from London, and I'm always missing up the date. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But basically the idea is that we need to keep track of the format of our date. Like if we are in the UK and we go by, or um, India for instance, or somewhere else where they go by day, month, year, like they say 5th June, 1990, then it would be five slash six slash 1990. But here in the US, it's June 5th, 1990. So the format date is just gonna be a D, a month, sorry, M for month. Wait, M is for month. D is for a day and Y is for a year. So based on the format that you're using, it has to be looked like this. And then like this, what capital Y for year. So if you were like, let's say that we had some other date. So, so the date that we want is June 5th, 1990. And if we were, let's say we were in the UK or something and it said that the date is five slash six, slash 1990, where we do it like 5th of June, 1990, where it's kind of reversed, then it would be 
um, day, month, and year. And then we would just switch this around, D. You just have to be cautious with how you have this set up, D, and then M for month, right here. So again, what's important to know is that this thing failed us. This is not true. Uh, May 1st, 1948 does not come after April 17th, 1995. That is definitely not the case. So, um, you know, just to hit that home, that did not work out for us. That was not working for us. And that's why, and you can't blame the poor Python. It's trying the best you can. And, you know, as a language, it's going to have some weaknesses and some things that it's just not good at compared to other things. So we just have to kind of accept it for what it is. So then now that we see this, so this is like if we were somewhere else, but this is our format date that we have here. So a date time object will be equal to date time, the date time package dot date time dot S T R P T I M E. This is a, a function that you need to use then. And the first argument is going to be the current date. It's going to be the date. Then we're going to have the format for the date. So it's the current day and then the format for the date. And then, so this is a date time object. So we can just call and see what this date time object is. So what this basically did is it took this and it's represented it in the following way. It's represented the month here. It's represented the day here, the year comes here. And then these other zeros are just some time, like hour and minute, but we don't really have that information yet. And we're not really concerned. So it's just gonna be zero, zero. It doesn't really make a difference here. This is just like, um, hour and seconds kind of thing. So we don't have to worry too much about those, but um, basically that's what you sort of see happens here is that it maps this 1990 here, then the six and this five, and then it's sort of like the, the year, the month, and then the date. And for argument's sake, like, because you know, five, six is still also another thing. Let's say that this was a month, how would it change? It would just swap the two. Like it would just it would swap the two. So essentially, the way that it works is that this and the date time is going to be the year. Then the next argument that will come will be the month and the day, and then like hours and seconds. I, I believe it's something like that, um, or just like the timing. So if we do end up switching this, you know, year, month, day. So if we ended up switching this and saying that, hey, it's instead of day, month, year, then it would say, oh, so the way that you put it, the six is supposed to be the day and the five is supposed to be the month. So it would swap it around for us. So it's really important that you explain the format because that's sort of how daytime organizes it. So here for us, it's month and day uh, and year. So the daytime object, again, the way that it organizes it is it has year, then month, day, and then I think hours and seconds. Or, or minutes, it could be minutes. So, um, so this is the object here. And then the next thing we can do is we can print daytime object and let's see what it is. So like minutes and hours, minutes and seconds like that. But if we want to get the date out of it, we can do something like this. We can just call the dot date function. And indeed, this is what we want, 1990, June 5th. This is sort of this representation that we want. So what I can do is I can try to do this for all of the dates that I had in this date list, remember I had this list of the dates. I can call it in a variable called date list and then say that date, date list looks like this. Date list is all of these dates right here. All these dates here. And I can write a, a for loop 
where I'm essentially, what I'm essentially doing is the following. I would say for date in day is print date. This is the first thing this is doing is, is a for loop going through every date in date list. And just to check with you guys, if you know the length of date list should be the eight, eight, seven days that we have. The number of elements in date list should be that. So we can print the date. Okay, so we printed all the dates here. Then what we can do is we can say, okay, well, this date would be like, we could also have had one, one 48. We could have had this as our date instead. Nothing stopped us from having um, January 1st, 1948 as our date and then seeing it like this. This also works too, right? Like we can represent Jan 1st, 1948, January 1st, uh, 1948 as a date. And then we can do that with it too. So in that same vein, we can say, okay, this is constant. This is not changing. This format is going to be the same for all these dates. This is a fixed variable. The format of the date is it's in month. And date, the date, and then year. That's fixed. Then we have this date time object here. So let's just put this here. And let's print out. So current day, okay, let's say we don't change anything. Let's just go through this. And um, I'm also going to add a print of this to separate, it separates each iteration in the for loop. And then let's see what happens. So we have 1, 1, 48. This is correct. But then um, Feb 1st, 1948, which is the next time here. But we still print this out. And why? Well, we need to update the date. This needs to be, this is the date argument. Current date was, was fixed at this. So what we do need to do is we just need to take the date and put it in here. This just needs to be some date. This is our format date. I mean, like it's it's staying here, but I just want to put it in one cell here just for you know make it neat. This is a date. Each each iteration date gets updated. Date gets updated because we're going through we are going through this list of dates. The date is getting updated in each for loop iteration. It's getting updated. Jan first, nineteen forty eight. Nineteen forty eight. Jan first. Uh, Feb 1st, 1948, no, 1948, 0201. That's all correct. This all is working out great. Awesome. Great. Okay, great. So it's looking great. It's similarly for June 1st, 1948. That is 1948, 0601. Awesome. So what we can do now is I can just have a new list, updated date list equals this. So it is uh, an empty list to hold the new updated dates. So I want to really put the, these values into the list. I want to put these into the list. So what I'll do then is I'm going to say I'm going to print out this date. This, this part, guys, this right here, this is what this is this is what this is what this is what this is it's all what those things are that we were wanting so what we will do here is we could just say that the updated date is just equal to this i know that this is not going to work out right away and we're going to have to make one more fix to this it's a very tiny fix but in any case we can print this out Again, you're going to see it's the same thing and works. So um, I'm going to, I can do two things. I can say updated uh, date list equals this plus the updated date. I can add it to the list. This is one way of appending or adding updated date to the list. This is one way or an alternate way. Um, you know, so you create a list and then add list. You can concatenate lists together. You know, if we have one list, like let's say we have a list um, A equals um, uh, 
and then B equals Then if we do A plus B, we can get Guruji Baba Didi Chanu Dad. We can add lists together. Or oh, another thing we can do is just call a dot append. And the dot append just sort of adds one item like that to the list, which is updated date. So there are two ways of doing this. So we can just use this way. We're adding the updated date to the list, uh, um, which, which will hold the new list inside updated date list each time. So we can run this. And now what we'll see is we're going to be kind of surprised. Okay, I gave it away from you just so that you don't get too concerned. You'll be like, hey, wait, 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 wait. What is this? Hey, wait a second. You're going to be like, what? What is that? And you remember when I showed you that like the daytime object here looks something like this. A daytime, that daytime, that's what this thing was. And we got the date and the date looked neater. So the idea is that it's sort of confusing. Why did it do this? So what can we do? Like, let's just take the first updated date from this list. We can take the updated date list at index zero, for instance, and just look at the first updated date. What we're going to see is it's date time date of, you know, um, 1948-11. Or, or maybe just to make it a little simpler because, it, you know, you might confuse the one and the one. So let's do Feb first like this. Okay, so it's slightly different. The Feb first. So we can try different things. I, I know in the end, the answer will be spring, but we're like, okay, how do I make this into something we can work with, right? Because it's like, it's not iterable. So the idea is that like, if you think of it, like we have BF date. BF date, it's like some object, not very easy to work with, you know? Um, so what we could do is we could make it a set and this gives us the unique elements and curly bracket brackets, but these all will be unique dates anyways, because every row is a unique date of unemployment. Or we can make it a list. And that's so much easier for, to, uh, for us to work with. And that was what our date list was. We can't make this a list, but what we can do is we can make this a string. So if we make it a string, then we make things even better to work with. We go from here all the way to here. And this is so much better for us. That is so good for us to do. So one thing we could do is something known as list comprehension. If we wanted to work with this, we can say, hey, okay, this is an updated date list. For each element, I just want to convert it to a string. So I could say, okay, this is, I can call it the same one, but for illustrations, let me just call it new list equals. And we have this original list. And what we want to do is str is short for string. So we converted the um, second updated date to a string and it gave us the output we wanted. Which is great. That's awesome. So what we can do is something called list comprehension, which is it's a really short part. You can do STRI for I in updated list. And then if we see this now, it looks like this. This is awesome. That's one thing we could do. Or we can directly do something else where when we are putting in the updated date, we can just kind of already convert it to a string. And if we do this step now, then our updated list, or, um, you know, like this is the old one. I'll just keep it there for reference. It, it looks really nice. This is something we can work with. And now this is what it was before. And this is after. So now if I run this again, you can see this is self, the 35th time it was executed, then 48. So these numbers kind of keep track of what's done first. So this was done before this. So that's one thing to help you guys with. So now this updated list looks great. It, it also looks like the new list, which are two ways. So this is also called list comprehension in Python. So now that we have this, we have our data frame here. We can just add a new column and call it updated date. And we can set this new list or let's just choose this updated date list. It's both the same. 
So we can set it equal to this. So we are, and because this has the same length, the length of this list, the number of items in this list is 887, which is the same as the number of rows here. And now we will have, so you just please pay attention here where this is unemployment rate, we added that. Now we're gonna add this here. And, um, okay, wait, I thought it was anticlimactic. Okay, now we see that we have this updated date here and this will work. So 1948, uh, Jan 1st, all these dates, 2021, uh, November 1st, and that's corresponding to this. So, whereas before, let me show you the contrast. We had this random date, and then we were trying the same approach here for this random date. Let me just copy this here and bring this title down. Okay, now this is the exciting part. So, are you ready to see if this will work or not? Are you ready? Are you ready? Clap your hand. Okay, so now we're going to see, does this work or not for us? So, let's just see what happens. So we had this before and this did not work, okay? Like these dates are not coming after April uh, 17, 1995. Uh, actually, let me see this here. Okay, they're not coming after it, but now let me see what happens if instead I try updated date like this. So this is not quite right because we just need to make one small fix. Before we were, we were random date was month, day, year because of this. But now, if we're using updated date, our format is now instead year slash month slash the new format that we get is year, uh, month, and then day. So we should have our new random date instead. Uh, it's just going to be equal to. 1995, 04, see they have the zero in front, right? 04 slash 17. So instead, we're going to just put it in the same format. It has to be the same format as this. And now what you see is indeed we have all the dates after April 17th, 1995. So these updated dates, and of course, what these are is these are just, you know, the different way of representing this date. So it's important that like, you know, whatever the date format is that you're looking at, it should just be the same, but this will show you guys how you can work with dates. Um, and, but you have to make sure that you're working with the new random date. It needs to be the same format as the column we are querying. This one. So all these dates are indeed true, right? And this matches uh, May 1st, 1995, all of this. So let's say we wanted to look at April 17th, like 2015 now from the data set. Yep, 2015 onwards. And let's say we wanted to look at uh, August 13th. August 13th. Uh, okay, August 13th. Yep, now 9.15. And let's say we wanted to make this 2019. It, it all it all works out because th these work for you. Or we could also find the dates that are before this, less than this on um, August 13th, 2019. So this is August uh, 13th, 2019. That's right, uh, my sister Didi's birthday. Uh, basically, these are the dates. So yes. This is basically how you can work with dates um, in a pandas data frame. So if it's not working for you, how can you get it to work? How you can work with the date time package? And, and I hope that this helped you guys. So I'm Sanya Kuller, and I hope that this helped you. And if this helped you, you know, please like, please subscribe to my channel. Um, in any case, please let me know how you found it, how I can help you, any comments and questions. And please, as always, reach out with any questions or concerns that you have. And I wish you guys all a very, very happy new year, prosperous and successful 2022, or whatever the date is, whenever you're watching this. But um, dates are important. And I thought that this would be a really cool way to, you know, 
kick off the new year. So thank you guys and happy holidays. How do you open it? So, so push the yeah, first, uh, yeah. Spin back. Spin and then push. Spin and hold and push. Yeah. There you go. Smile! Smile! Okay, good. Get the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a video, we can keep on doing it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what's next? Andy, what's next?